everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, what's up? My name is Delia, and if you want to be updated with all the videos that I post here, hit that subscribe button. So today I will be sharing with you my travel tips for Taipei. For the very first time ever, I went to Taipei back in April for a four night, five day trip. So first let's just talk currency. Taiwanese currency is TWD, Taiwanese dollar. Just a word of caution, I made this mistake myself so hopefully you won't do this either, but exchanging money at the airport is not recommended in my opinion because they will charge you, I believe it was 30 Taiwanese dollars for the transaction. And so when you exchange the money, you're already losing a little bit, right? But when they take off that extra 30 Taiwanese dollars, it's just ate up a lot of the money that I had. So in my opinion, it's not worth it to exchange your money at the airport. However, if you must exchange your money at an airport out of convenience, I would suggest combining your transactions with the group that you're traveling with. This is another mistake that my friend and I made. We did two separate transactions when we uh, exchanged our money, which was so unnecessary. If we just combined all of our money together and did one transaction, then we both would have just paid the 30 Taiwanese dollar together and we could have just split that. So especially in the case where you're traveling from place to place and Taiwan is not your first destination, I highly recommend you to exchange your money elsewhere. For example, before Taiwan, I went to Hong Kong. So I did exchange my remaining Hong Kong dollars that I didn't need anymore into Taiwanese dollars, but I also exchanged some of my Canadian currency in Taiwan into Taiwanese dollars, which was a little bit of a loss. Okay, next I want to talk about transportation. Highly recommend that you get the Taiwanese Metro card, which is called the Easy Card. This is what one of them could look like. They do have adult and student ones. Although this is a student card, I still pay for adult fees. So I think when you want to purchase, uh, when you want to get the student rates, you have to provide some sort of student ID. This Metro card is 100 Taiwanese dollars and you can get this anywhere at any convenience store right when you get off into the airport. Um, so 7-Eleven, Family Mart, okay. Any kind of convenience store, um, they sell these. Although I borrowed this Metro card from my friend, I believe when you purchase it, it will be 500 Taiwanese dollars, but that's because um, you will actually have a $400 balance in the cart. Now that you have arrived at the airport, let's say you want to go into Taipei Main City. So there are two trains you can take for that. One is the express train and one is the commuter train. So depending on where you're living, if you're living beyond Taipei Main uh, Station, then you will want to take the express train. It'll only have three stops until you reach Taipei Main Station. This is going to take about 35 to 38 minutes depending on whether you have arrived at Terminal 1 or 2. So it's definitely a lot faster than the other train, which is the commuter train. So in addition to the MRT, which is super convenient in Taipei, another form of transportation available is buses. So something that I've learned and noticed is that because the bus stations have multiple bus numbers and bus routes, um, if you want the bus to stop, you will have to wave it down. I don't always see people do this, but I personally thought it was just safer for me to always wave down the bus that I wanted to take just in case it didn't stop. The bus driver isn't going to see people standing at the bus stop and know that people want to take their bus because like I said, there's so many different bus routes at this one station. So that's just something I kind of noticed and maybe you will find helpful too. Another thing about taking buses in Taipei is that you have to notice when you should tap for the fare. On the bus, on the outside in the in the screen, you will notice the symbol for up and or a symbol for down. So if you see the symbol for up, that means you have to tap when you get onto the bus. If you see the symbol for down, that means you have to tap when you get off the bus. I've taken buses where they've driven through multiple zones where you would have to tap on as well as off. If you're not sure and you know that you already tapped on, just tap again when you get before you get off because if you weren't supposed to tap off, it wouldn't count the fare, so it doesn't really matter, better safe than sorry. So another thing I noticed in Taiwan was whenever I made a purchase, they would always give you a receipt, and in addition to the receipt, they would give you some sort of QR code. And I always wonder, what is this QR code? And so I found out that every two months, the Taiwanese government releases numbers for the receipts, and if yours matches, you can actually redeem it for money. The value that you can redeem can range from 200 to 100,000 NTS. So for me, because I'm a foreigner and I was only there for five days, I didn't see a need to collect these receipts. And so what you'll also notice all around Taiwan is they will have these little clear plastic boxes where you can donate your receipts. By donating your receipt, if there was a match for those numbers, that money would be donated to the charity that that box is representing. So that's what I chose to do. These clear bins are anywhere. They can be at the cash register at some stores, just out on the street. If possible, maybe double check if this is actually a legitimate donation box. Maybe someone is just collecting all these other people's 
receipts on behalf of a charity, but they're actually just using it for personal reasons. So next, I just want to quickly touch on some things that you can do when you are in Taipei. Definitely check out some night markets. So Taiwan is known for their rowdy, sizzling hot night markets. So I have two to recommend to you. There is the Rohi night market as well as the Shilin night market. The Shilin one is the most popular and the biggest night market in Taipei. However, my personal preference was actually the Rohi market. I just found that the selection of food was a little bit better in my opinion and because it was a little bit smaller, it actually made navigating through the whole night market much easier. For Xilin, I was walking in some sort of fortress, long, and the food stalls were just endless. But regardless, I highly recommend that you check it out because it is definitely something you need to experience when you're in Taipei. Me personally, highlights of my trip were going to Jufen and Xifen. I spent a lot of time researching how, what is the best way to go to these two places. Should I do them in two days? Should I go them on separate days? My recommendation is take your time, go to each place one at a time. Yes, you are going to be going from, let's say, the main city area and out all the way east into Jufun and then just back to the main city and then back out again to Shifun. But I personally like doing that because it allowed me to explore each place at a much more relaxed pace and I was able to enjoy each location much better and it was just not rushed. However, if you don't have enough time to spread out Jufen and Shifen onto two different days on your itinerary, it is definitely doable for you to do both. You would just have to go to Shifen before you go to Jufen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that just in just a second. Like I said, there's tons of ways that you can get to Jufen and or Shifen. For me personally, I found the most cost-effective and most comfortable method and I would definitely recommend this to you if you live around the Bay Ming Station. I personally didn't live on the Green Line, I was on Red Line, it was like Shuang Lian Station. And for me, this just was the most sensible method of going to Jufen. So what you want to do is go to Bay Ming Station, this is on the Green Line, and you want to take the exit number 2. Once you leave the station, as you take the escalators up, right outside of the station you're going to see a bus stop. Take bus number 965 and this bus will take you directly from Bay Ming Station all the way to Jufen Old Street in 40 minutes on a very comfortable bus with Wi-Fi. So for bus 965, I tapped on for $7 and I tapped off for $75 for a total of $82 one way. For me, this was just super convenient. All I had to do was take one or two stations to Bay Ming Station, hopped on a bus, sat there for 45 minutes, and it dropped us off right at Jufen. And just walk along the hill a little bit to the old street. I couldn't have imagined a better way to get there. It was super hassle-free and quite cost-effective as well. And so after taking in the beautiful scenery of the mountains and the fog, and then walking through the old street, trying out the food there, you want to find yourself at this bus stop station, which is just up the hill across from this sign. From there, you just take the same bus back down, this time, I'm not sure why exactly, but I tapped on $15 and tapped off $75. So now for Shifen, like I said before, I went to Jufen and Shifen on different days. So same thing, I went to Beiming Station, took the 965 bus, tapped on for $7, tapped off for $75, but this time, we're going to be getting off at Rufang Rail Station. So once you get off at Rufang Rail Station, you're actually going to be walking back towards the direction where the bus had come from for about two minutes to Rufang Train Station. Here you're just going to go to the counter and buy a train ticket to Shifen. It's $19 and you're going to be going to Platform 3. Once you get onto this train, after about three stops, it's going to make a stop at Shifen Railway. And here you can see people at the lanterns in the sky, which I personally don't necessarily agree with because it's actually so damaging to the environment, emitting unnecessary CO2. Plus, when you go check out the other points in Shifen, you find that the lanterns are just littered everywhere. It was actually a truly devastating sight and just something that I chose to not participate in. But anyways, nonetheless, you can enjoy your time strolling along the railway, take a bunch of pictures, and one thing I recommend doing is checking out the waterfall. There's signs all over that will lead you towards the Shifen waterfall. It's actually quite convenient because once you're done at the waterfall and you've ex exited back onto the main road, you will actually be outside the Shifen Visitor Center and here you'll see a bus stop where you're going to take bus number 765 and this bus is going to take you back to one of the MRT stations. The MRT station that this bus stops at is on the brown line. It's called the Muzi station. I remember tapping on for $15 and then tapping 
have it all for $30. These routes that I found were, in my opinion, super cost effective, very convenient, made it so easy. I just want to minimize the amount of times that I have to transfer and so both these routes that I've chosen were super simple. It was always just get to the MRT station, take a bus, or take a bus, get to MRT station. So that's just the way that I like to do it. Um, maybe it's something that you want to try. So if you are on a time crunch and you want to hit up both Jufen and Shifen in the same day, so whatever method you choose, just get to Shifen. After you're done exploring there, you will have to go back to the Rufang train station where you'll purchase a train ticket to go to Jufen Oak Street. Because there's no direct method of transportation from Shifen and Jufen directly, you have to go through Rufang train station. And if you want, when you're in Jufen, you can use the method that I use, take the 965 bus back to Beiming Station. So like I said, Jufen and Shifen were definitely my highlights of Taiwan. But above that, I did want to make a few food recommendations. Something that's very popular in Taiwan are the sticky rice rolls. This place that we hit up was super duper popular. There's always a constant lineup, even up until the moment that it's closing. And it is right outside of Taipei Main Station. You have to take exit M8. I'll leave the name and some sort of other markers or indication of the location down in the description box. And the last food recommendation I want to make is a little shop that serves the traditional Taiwanese breakfast. So you got like the buns, you got the soy milk, you have omelets and things like that. It's called Yonghe Soy Milk King. I believe there's multiple locations. Again, I'll link it down below for further instructions. Like I said, I was in Taiwan for four days and five nights. If I had to redo this whole trip, I would definitely give myself one or two extra days. I unfortunately didn't get to do things such as go to the hot springs in Beito or get a foot massage. Go on my behalf when you go to Taiwan, get yourself a nice massage because it is super inexpensive there and just something I definitely regret not doing when I was there. So that about wraps up the tips that I have for Taiwan. I hope you found this interesting and made your planning process a little bit easier for your trip to Taiwan. If you have any extra tips or comments, please leave them in the comment section below so that we can all learn. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! And so, like I said then, like I said then, world of them.